We are here with Grandmaster Anish Giri, who just drew his game with uh, Fabiano Caruana. Anish, I think theoretically it was a very important game, perhaps because no, not many have been played up to the mood D5. Yes, yes, it was an uh, interesting game. The only nuance was that I was expecting. Uh, I mean, I knew I could be surprised, uh, and I thought it was likely, but I. I was expecting the pattern of uh, which he always plays. I thought if you're going to surprise me, it can be anything. So I didn't uh, repeat the Berlin. And um, I decided to play this line I played already a few times. And here I previously have taken a few times and played d5 and gained, got always good position. But uh, I've studied it very much and um, I'm sure Fabio did as well. So I decided to slightly modify the version. And uh, because I looked at the, this version as well, here again d5. In general, this is a new, fresh concept. Uh, to fight for advantage this way, because uh, just for like let's say a layman like me or for the viewers, uh, what is exactly white fighting? Let's say after a move like d5, I mean it looks so symmetrical. Yeah, no, it's uh, even not only for layman, even for myself. Let's say a few years ago, I thought it was that equal this position, regardless where the pawn is, because you know you think he also has a c5 square, the long diagonal. But um, there, there was a game of. Uh, uh, Magnus against uh, Levon, and already before the game we found out with my second that this can be tricky. And uh, Black is actually quite cramped, and even some position like this when they trade bishops. Uh, he has sort of the good bishop, but in fact the bishop is going to be restricted after, let's say, a move like h3. Levon incidentally also had a very bad knight in that game. Here the knight is good, but uh, sorry, but uh, the bishop actually on c8 is restricted, and suppose I get... Uh, okay, I mean, I just made a stupid move, let me make uh, uh, good ones. Suppose we get uh, here, I'll put bishop on d3, I restrict this bishop. Then somewhere the c7 pawn might become weak in the mm. long run. If black is able to free himself, he's going to have a hanging pawns. Uh, of course, it's very likely that we, it will be a draw because very little pieces are left on the board. But uh, you know, it's possible to play. And the main thing is that uh, nowadays it's difficult to find um, revolutionary ideas for every game. So this is a reasonable line to play when you want to be solid and... Uh, no chance uh, of losing, that's very important as well. For sure, and some chances of winning. I mean, uh, I have studied these positions. Uh, with precise play, it's possible to... Especially the computer is very good in these positions. Uh, because human, we sort of get a bit like, we get like, okay, this is probably going to be a draw. And we lose the motivation, at least back in the day. But the computer has shown us that, um, you know, this is maybe 0 35. And then you see, okay, why is 0 35? And he beats you over and over with white. And then you start thinking, ah, oh, well, actually not so easy, you know. Uh, even sometimes you can trade everything, and even in the night end game, the c7 pawn can be weak. I have more space, you know, in the end game I'll go g4, f4, king 2, e3. It's, it's possible to play these positions, and uh, that's why it's fashionable now to uh, try to challenge the pawn immediately with uh, c6. I mean, even here... I c6 is a novelty, actually. I mean, maybe computer games or maybe correspondence games, but over the board... Well, I think this is rare uh, version. This is more common version, and here also it's possible to play like that. Okay. Somebody played like this, I think, against... I think Vichy played against me like this. So it's a new thing to challenge this pawn immediately, because back in the day they thought, you know, just let's just trade everything and uh, make, a, make a draw, but as I said, it's not so simple. So then the c6 is new, and here he played c6 very early, and uh, I've analyzed it a little bit, but uh, I started to wonder during the game uh, what it was. Because if he starts with d6, I'll go knight d2. But if he starts with c6, ideally, if he goes cd, I would like to have my knight on a3 and c2. Because then I blockade d4, but also have the idea of knight b4. And also, for example, I can attack his... Uh, I mean. This That's is the difference between having a knight on f3 and c2. Huge, huge. I mean, uh, now 96, in the game it was 96, so you get this position. And it's a huge difference, because once I try to do the same, he goes d4 immediately. If I go knight d4, he takes it immediately, and it's going to be a draw. Like in the game, you know, like yeah. uh, rook d1, rook e8. It's going to be... Uh, oh, I, mean, I can't play, can't play rook d1, yeah, yeah, yeah. a3, etc. So it's a huge difference, and I sort of knew the... I mean, I saw that there is some difference, but I started wondering here if he goes d6. Now, after knight d2, knight c7, dc, bc, I felt my bishop is not um, ideally placed and he's coming with knight d5. Maybe I should have played that anyway. I think actually, in hindsight, I think this is what I have prepared. <laughs> but okay, he starts to bother me here. I mean, I thought here if he goes d6, I will uh, have more flexibility with the bishop. I can play knight e4 or take, take knight f3 and then choose when to where 
how to put the bishop. Uh, for example, I might, I mean, I'm, it might be more flexible for me to go h3, you know, first and then c. Um, not to get bishop exposed for knight d5 and, uh, mm -hmm. and things like that. Like that. Uh, so I thought knight d2 is, um, and I thought cd anyway, I have good compensation. But yeah, I actually missed this very strong idea bishop d7, bishop c6. Because it's not so uh, well, if natural. If he plays, say, bishop e6 or something, then... Well, he's struggling with the... Uh, I mean, he will always go back there. But let's suppose he doesn't do that. He's struggling with the uh, placement of this knight on c7. You will go g3, bg2, yeah? And For example, yeah. I mean, in general, if he does not do the... He's struggling with... Or even even I can play like this, or... He's struggling with this knight on c7. What is the knight doing here? Right. That's why I thought here uh, he could try to bring knight to f6. And I thought this was not a good move. But then when he played here, I realized it's a good move because bishop comes to c6 and knight comes to e6. And here I was thinking for a long time and I realized I don't have any advantage. And uh, basically the game is just uh, equal. And here I also realized that uh, I thought I can make some moves, but then I realized... Uh, draw. And then I realized that I don't have a next move. I mean, now knight d4 is not even possible because of some rookie 2 stuff. And I actually don't have a move because if my knight moves, uh, he has d4, as I said, and it's just equal. I mean, he's on the nice side of equality here. So, uh, yeah, this is a huge uh, difference that knight on f3 is really much worse than on a3. So, uh, next theoretical games probably will go bishop e3 and d6, maybe. So the line is not yet dead, yeah? There, there will be games in this. And well, there happen. will be games everywhere. I mean, uh, there are many ways to challenge the Berlin. This is one of the... Um, well, one of the safest ones, but also uh, reasonably critical. I mean, especially it was inspiring. Uh, I knew about this line, and I was to play it already a long time ago. But I was especially inspired when I saw that Magnus won. So then you see it's actually even possible not only to press, but even to win a game here. And once you see that, okay, uh, life of a Berlin player becomes much harder because he has to know, uh, he has to be precise here, he has to be precise in the end game, he has to be precise in D3 variations. And, uh, you know, by making life of a Berlin player difficult, you uh, prolong and uh, continue the prosperity of 1e4. <laughs> so, uh, yesterday we asked you about the tournament here, the favorites, and you gave us some very good insights. I think it would be the right time, because you played the challenger today, to ask your prediction about the match uh, between Magnus and Fabiano. What do you think, uh, especially because you have played with them so many times? Yeah, I've been asked quite uh, quite a few times. Ah, uh, you already been asked. No, I mean by of course all sorts of people or uh, media they want to know this question, and uh, uh, it's very hard, very hard to say. I mean, obviously Fabiano is the uh, is a great player. Obviously Magnus is the, the world champion for a reason. You know, he's uh, uh, he's very versatile, and I think it will a lot will come down to the uh, psychological uh, uh, shape of the of the players who will be able to m maintain the, the tension. Uh, and uh, to what degree motivation uh, will serve as, uh, uh, you know, as a positive factor or as a pressure factor? For example, for Fabiano, I mean, for him, you know, it's really uh, everything at, at stake. Uh, but it somehow feels like he's much more calm than what Karyakin was. In general, he's a calm. He's a very, very calm person in general. And that is his huge strength. I mean, I've played him when he uh, lost like a couple games in a row and, uh, well, he remains, you know, he, he keeps his composure. Uh, it's definitely his strength, and uh, that's very impressive. But of course, still he's affected. I mean, when he has bad tournaments, he has bad tournaments. And uh, I can say that he played badly this year, was terrible. I mean, he's affected, but at least he is able to keep his, uh, his cool and poker face. And he's been known for bouncing back a few times. It was a famous uh, tournament in Dortmund that he won after a very big start. And it was just seven rounds. He started with a loss and uh, then won, like, four games in a row and suddenly finished first almost with a round to spare. So uh, he is in general psychologically very very well prepared, but Magnus has ex had experience. And I noticed that experience is uh, vital. In, um, even in, you know, uh, when I played this tournament online recently, I played Shahriar, and uh, he had no experience playing that tournament, and I did. And it gives me some small advantage, you know, I know the interface, of, you know, all these little things, and Magnus as well, you know, he knows the press conference, knows the routine, he knows how many cameras are there approximately, he's been through it. He's got all these questions before, you know, uh, uh, from the likes of you, and uh, he, he knows that, and for Fabi it's all new. Um, so I think psychologically Magnus is in a more favorable position, and also Magnus knows, uh, maybe he had some sleepless nights during World Championship match already. Maybe he knows that, okay, the one time I tried to uh, watch a cartoon for, for babies, and it made me fall asleep, so maybe I should do it again. 
or maybe uh, it didn't help and he was listening to rock music and fell asleep and now he was like, yeah, I should listen to rock music. So all these things uh, he's dealt with before, so I think that is one of his main advantages. Other than that, he is a very um, universal player. And Fabiano, of course, uh, occasionally um, demonstrates, okay, very rarely he demonstrates that there's certain positions that he feels a little less um, than a player like Magnus. But, you know, on the other hand, in some sharp positions, he's done, he's done very well. Um, and he's also been, been Magnus a few times, yeah. so uh, well, it will be very it interesting. Be a good yeah. match. For and sure. and uh, it's a hypothetical question. If uh, you had to choose being a second of someone because you can play an important role in the match, whom would you support and whom would you uh, for this match? Not that someone asks No, 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 or... nobody. I can, I can tell you just uh, I'm not involved in general, yeah, just so you know. But I. Uh, well, I would be shocked if Magnus would ask me. I'd be shocked. Uh, and uh, this is also why I will say that uh, I, I don't want that. I would be less shocked if Fabi had asked me. Although, I mean, with both these guys, I am very... I mean, Fabi I actually like as a, as a person uh, for a change. But um, when it comes to our competitive... I mean, we, are, we have very competitive relations with uh, both of Magnus and uh, Fabi. And I think they wished me to lose so many times, and I wish them to lose so many times, that we will, will not make the step of offering help to each other. Uh, because well, but if you think about it, when Anand was playing against Topalo, then Kramnik and Kasparo and everyone well, they went ganged, to help. they ganged up against uh, Port <laughs> Veselin, because uh, I believe Kramnik had, had a grudge against Topalo uh, for some good reasons, they had some, some beef, yeah? So uh, that was a big motiv motivator to help Anand. In my case, I have beef with both with all the top players, so I don't. Uh, but uh, you know, I helped Kramnik, so maybe if I would get some offer with some uh, uh, interesting offer uh, where I think I would I could could help maybe one of them. But that is not happening, and uh, they'll they'll mostly do fine. I mean, they both have clear uh, group of helpers. The main second of uh, Fabi is Kasim Kasimjanov. Main second of uh, Magnus is Nielsen. They the chemistry there works in both cases. They, it's a long-standing yeah. relationship. Uh, and um, they don't need me so much. I mean, they both know how to work with computer. They uh, can find new ideas. Of course, I have some stuff of my own, but uh, I mean, they just have to do their work mostly, and uh, I'm sure they both will. And uh, yeah, I hope it will be an interesting match. I hope that, uh, that we'll see more, also, a little more opening uh, uh, success for White, because last match made it look like uh, it's all hopeless. I don't think that's the case. I mean, I don't think it's that hopeless as that match looked. I, I think they trusted each other too much, both players. Uh, there was too little testing games, and uh, uh, I think they can be more, more uh, old-fashioned, uh, good old-fashioned. Uh, I mean, I understand the chess is changing, I understand uh, it's harder, but I believe now and then you can try to see maybe your opponent forgot something, uh, maybe you think he had all unless, maybe not, just, you know, sometimes to check it. I think it's not so bad, and I think they will, they, maybe uh, it will be more like that, but let's see. Sure, yeah. And how is your team doing? Uh, it's a very difficult match. Uh, <laughs> as, I, as I said yesterday, the weak link is Shankland, but Shankland played very solid. Uh, okay, weak link, of course, under... I mean, Shankland is a world-class player as well, so... Uh, yeah, Shankland is playing oh. against uh, Jordan. Well, ah, he won already. What? What? He won his game. But wait a second, what happened? Uh, what happened there? It was, it was a very solid... Uh, very solid side towards that game, and why to lose that? Okay, I mean, that is that's ridiculous. I mean, ah, he, no, that's really ridiculous. Uh, I, I mean, okay, I'm saying he's worse here. He, but White has to. I, I played similar endgame once against against Gimeshi actually, with White, with White. And I know it can be, I pushed uh, maybe like this, yeah. I pushed with white very hard and I was very close to winning. I mean, if, this is if black goes passive, yeah, with knight on e7. Of course, also, we should keep in mind, I can always include h5. No, I understand it's very, very dangerous, but I mean, it's a playable endgame and Gimeshi defended very well. Uh, it was, I had such a e5 thing, I mean, f4, h3, g4, f5, I pushed everything. But the more you push, of course, the more pawns get traded, and it becomes a 50-50. Okay, it's a very nice endgame for white, because uh, also the bishop later will go to... Uh, in, H4, maybe. Yeah, bishop e3, f2, indeed. Uh, this, once the knight goes from b6, this bishop is also free. It will go to c2. Uh, black is... You know, he wants e7 square for both knight and the bishop. Mm -hmm. 
he has too little, too little space. He should have played h5, yeah, by the way, but okay, uh, regardless. And it was a very tough endgame, but um, yeah. He tried to solve by tactical yeah, but means. Yeah, this is a little bit, of course, uh, I mean, it's a pity. It's, uh, it's typical for, uh, it's typical to crack under pressure, but uh, a player, for example, like Fabiano, uh, they should be a bit more patient. I mean, for a world-class player, there should be a bit more patience. Uh, Jordan liked it a bit today. I mean, uh, you should never lose in one move. And uh, occasionally we all make that mistake and then we curse ourselves for it, right? Because this is what distinguishes the world-class player from uh, just stronger and master. You so never uh, lose in one move. So if, if, if uh, Black, in the best case scenario, didn't play, why didn't play, he well, could he, get his knight back. He, looked, then he, 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 plan, he thought this, uh, knight is back. He thought yeah. about that. And uh, uh, of course, But yeah. then this would be a draw, yeah, if the knight goes back. Or still, it's a difficult endgame. Mm, I'm trying to understand if it's difficult. Yeah. Uh, well, it's an improvement for Black, obviously. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, but how do you think? Well, like because a, a, a four, a four or five, yeah. But well, this must be a draw, of course. Especially, I'm also wondering. You know, this knight I put last time, um, knight to d7 and b6. The knight on b6 actually has a good function of keeping the c2 bishop engaged. I'm wondering here actually, maybe not to go knight c8, maybe to keep things as they are, keep the knight on. The problem is just I cannot drop the bishop back uh, because of bishop d2, yeah? And my uh, a5. a5. So I wanted to stabilize my b6 a5 pawns. But uh, on the other hand, now this c2 bishop is forced to be on b3 to cover c4 and a4. So in a way, you... you so know, f5 becomes a little more difficult. Yeah, but on the other hand, both your pieces are stuck now, yeah? So you sacrifice both your pieces to keep the important bishop. I don't know, it's a very hard call to make. So, for example, here after f4, uh, I bring my king to the center, you go h3, g4, and um, f5, yeah? That's what would happen. h3, g4, f5, yeah. Yeah, uh, here, here. I wonder if I need to bring my king f3, bishop e3, or bishop f2 first. Yeah, it's very difficult. Also, always question if you do such a, if you go for, if you do this, because you, you trade the pawn, but you soften your uh, pawns. Yes. But maybe it's not so bad, you know? You, g4, hg, then, you know, you trade some pawns, king is, king yeah, is doing it well. It becomes very difficult to... I think this is where uh, it was important for Jordan to really sit and defend. Maybe... Well, it's like this. I mean, I know exactly how it is. You see bishop b2. It's, I've done it too many times, and I still do it sometimes, and my colleagues do it sometimes. The, you suddenly see, like, oh, there is an easy way out. Because you don't want to... In the head, you don't want to suffer. You see an easy way out, and you want it to work, in the head, you know, you want it to work, and you, you don't think like that, but your brain thinks, look, I don't want to suffer, I see an easy way out, and I'm your brain, and I hope it works, you know? <laughs> and then you think like, okay, brain, it works? You say, I hope it works. You say, okay, brain said it works. So then you do this. In fact, it takes 30 extra seconds to check if it works, sure. but you don't want, you know, deep inside, you don't want to but find it, out it doesn't work. Exactly. You want it to work. But of course, if you, you think for one minute, you find out that kicking it too takes, Bishop b3 and the knight c4 take, take king takes on c4 and uh, yeah that's over. I don't think he uh, I don't think he thought that pawn end game can be saved. It, it might seem like sort of a fortress, but of course not. I mean it, it doesn't. I'm sure he knew it's not a fortress. I mean I will break through on the king. I mean let's say if but maybe d6 better is to take on e6. Yes, yeah. I, I think no. I think you will break through. I think you suppose pawns were if, you know locked here, it would be draw. But I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm completely sure this is uh, easily breakable. I mean, I will bring the king to g4, h4, go h5, g5, f4, gf, king, f4, and g4, g5. Or, uh, yeah, I guess it's the main way to break, yeah, h4, h5. Maybe if the pawn is on g4, it's already already draw, yeah? Uh, so you mean to say if, if this... White, yeah, king if, d8, let's say, if pawn is on g4, it could be a miracle. No, g5, I think they lose it, f4, no, f4. No, I think you just wait, it might be a miracle. No, it's, it's, it's not, because I come, it's actually nice. Uh, it's very nice how I win this. I come with h4, I go h5, and after gh, I don't take gh, I do this famous Kasparov Karpov thing, and I just go here. Because <laughs> nice. gh would be a draw, and then I break through. And if g5, I go f4, and I break through. So this is all hopeless. But uh, with a big margin, it's hopeless, because I can also take on d and win at some point. Uh, yeah. it's, but he didn't think of that, he just missed. You simply missed king e2. You think you want to come closer to the knight, but so that's a pity, yeah. So then we lose, uh, Erwin is of suffering, we lose most likely 3-1. Yeah, sure. But uh, I think it was uh, a very interesting uh, thing that you showed us right now, how you think in these endgames and positions. Uh, 
Yeah, there was you know one interesting moment we discussed with Fabi. Uh, he could go A4, yeah? Here. But maybe he was afraid of rook c7. Okay, you have rook c8. Yeah. Um, but then the end game should be three also. Yeah, and go back, then go back and a pawn. Ah. I mean, no, I mean, okay, this is at least you feel like you achieved something. I don't know. Yeah, rook c7. I mean, I don't think it's a big. Yeah, big question is uh, what is here. I mean, your rook is very strange. My a pawn. No, this probably used messed up with white. Uh, I don't say that it's you know it changes the whole uh, thing. I mean it's not like I'm winning the spawn. It's very well protected, and the knight on b6 is just defending. It's a very passive piece, in fact. Uh, all pieces are quite passive, but um, it's an achievement. And okay, he also missed the e4. No, okay, he got outplayed. But I think it was not much here. It was very little. I think here it was very little. I don't think it's much. At least practically, I think black is not so not so bad. Yeah. Well, I wish that uh, some miracle happens, and uh, in case not, good luck no, for okay, the next uh, next I rounds. I mean, uh, I'm not believing in miracles, <laughs> so it's fine. Just good luck for next rounds is sufficing. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much.